Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is Wednesday, July the 18th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerVIP.com, a free site. Let's talk boxing. In particular, let's talk about a historical opportunity that one fighter has that really is worth mentioning. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, first, just a quick commentary. You know, in boxing, a lot's missing right now in some divisions, right? I believe the situation is so good at cruiserweight. It's so good at cruiserweight that regardless of who wins the Usyk Gassiev fight, Right? Either guy could win it. I like Usyk in that fight, but we'll talk about that in another, in another video. But whoever wins that fight, understand both the winner and loser, in my opinion, has a very good chance, very good chance, of winning the heavyweight title. Right? I have a couple of videos up. This video is really about Manny Pacquiao. But I have a couple of videos up in my favorites folder here on YouTube. And what I want people to do is to take a quick look at them. You're going to see everything that the heavyweight division is missing right now. Right? One of them is Pacquiao De La Hoya. What I want you to do is to start that film at the 9 minute 15 second mark. And you're going to see Manny Pacquiao using foot movement turning a bigger fighter, then coming inside and simply destroying him in one of the best performances I've seen by any fighter at any time. Right? What's noteworthy is the movement. Understand, as hard as this is to believe, Manny Pacquiao was the puncher that night against Oscar De La Hoya. Right? And Pacquiao is setting up shots with leg movement and feints. He's moving around the ring. Well, let's bring this to the heavyweight division. Next to that video in my favorites folder, I have a video, Muhammad Ali and his prime, blinding speed. I don't even want you to focus on the speed, folks. What I want you to do, halfway through the video, they start showing you Ali in his prime against fighters like Sonny Liston who held a heavyweight title at the time they fought Ernie Torell who had a share of the heavyweight title at the time they fought and you're gonna notice something that today if you're watching Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder you didn't know it was possible a heavyweight up on his toes moving around the ring. That's the first thing. Foot movement. Yes, it's possible even at heavyweight. Right? We're in a flat-footed, big, clunky fighter era. Right? Gone is the athleticism that comes with movement and spacing. You're also going to notice Sonny Liston, who had one of the best jabs in history, shooting jabs at Ali, who's in front of him, You'll notice Ali doesn't even have a hand up. The punches end right here. You're also going to notice something that seems to have been forgotten. I know we look at huge punching power. Joshua, Wilder, they're big punchers. No question about it. Young people watching the Ali films will be shocked at part of the tape. Folks, that's called a combination. Not a one-two, not this Vladimir Klitschko era, blind him with the left, throw the right hand. No, you're going to notice a heavyweight opening up with both hands, throwing a combination, right? I'm guessing combination fighters like Ray Leonard are looking at the sport today and wondering what happened. Understand, if you're a child of the 70s and 80s, I'm telling you, most of the fighters back then knew how to dance. That's what we called it. Dancing around the ring. Right? No one dances in the heavyweight division today. 
right? No one's up on their toes giving you a right-handed stance, a left-handed stance, moving their feet. Well, what I've done in the favorites folder is next to the Ali video, I have a video called The Magical Footwork of Jersey Joe Walcott. Now understand, Jersey Joe was smaller than Big Bad Joe Lewis, who really belongs in this era, right? Big guy, big punch, slow-moving feet, flat-footed, right? That's who Joe Lewis was. And you're actually going to see in that Jersey Joe Walcott video, Walcott dropping Joe Lewis, right? Hypnotizing Joe with his feet. This is pre-Ali, smaller guy. Relying on speed, spacing, footwork, right? The heavyweight division's missing that right now. You have some guys. Yui Fury has footwork. I'll concede that. Doesn't have a belt right now. Maybe it's a matter of time. I've seen Joseph Parker up on his toes. All I'm saying to you is you got Maris Breeders. You got Alexander Usyk from the cruiserweight division. I don't see anybody who can stop them at heavyweight. I don't. Right? Gassiev throws so much more volume. So much more volume than, let's say, Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua that I, I wonder whether he could beat them at their own game, getting inside and throwing bombs. Well, let's talk about Manny Pacquiao. I know I picked Manny Pacquiao in the fight. Thank you for the huge viewership of that pre-fight video. But I got to tell you, I was watching the fight and I was astonished. I was astonished. Folks, it was all there. The footwork. Pacquiao's blessed. He's a freak athlete. The power. You went into this fight knowing that Lucas Matisse is a big hitter. Even Matisse's critics will acknowledge he hits hard with both hands. Right? A few rounds in, you understood he wasn't the puncher in this fight. The puncher in this fight was Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao was interesting, too. That right hand up top, that straight right hand, Pacquiao's a southpaw, devastating. As devastating as always. But Pacquiao, who I've been criticizing for years here online as a one-handed fighter, stunned me with a lot of right hands, right? He also stunned me by throwing uppercuts. He was mixing up the punches. And let me tell you, he's so fast and hit so hard that the second knockdown in the fight is really classic. Understand, Matisse is a tough guy. Matisse gets hit and stunned, but he's still on his feet. Hit and stunned. Then I believe he realized he didn't know where Pacquiao was in the ring. He was stunned. He understood that the next punch might just end the fight. So he went down. He took a knee. A big puncher got dazed in a fight and was so overwhelmed by the speed and angles of his opponent, whether it's an Ali or a Pacquiao, right? The speed and the angles. Pacquiao's hitting them all over the place. That Lucas Matisse understood, I'm dazed, I need to take a knee right here. Because if this guy lands one more punch while I'm dazed, I might end up in the hospital. What I want the world to do is to look hard at 39-year-old Manny Pacquiao. He's going to be 40 in a few months, folks. Right? Look hard at him. This guy right now should be at the center of the boxing universe. He has an unprecedented opportunity. Let's talk about what that is. Let me just say this. You know, in uh, marriages, I'm a divorce lawyer. I've heard this several times. There's something called a seven-year itch. 
right after seven years, you could be married to Miss America, some guys are going to start to wonder a little bit. They're going to start to be a little bit bored. Some women are going to look at their husbands. He could be Mr. America. And they're going to start to be a little bit bored. That familiarity might not be as exhilarating at the end of year seven as it was at the start of the marriage. Now, dare I say in boxing, it's my belief, one man's opinion, that boxing generations cycle every seven years, right? In other words, you look up on day one, you got a group of guys hanging around the throne. You have a group of guys sitting on the throne, you have a group of guys hanging around the throne. Seven years later, it's a different group. You'll have some all-time greats still hanging out there, right? Maybe a Mayweather, a Pacquiao. But the rest of the cast of characters are going to change, right? Some of these unbeaten fighters will have lost fights and will have faded, will no longer be viewed as serious contenders. So, from this seat, every seven years or so, you have a new group of young lions prowling the forest, right? Or at least the ring. Now, let's look at Manny Pacquiao. It's 2018. Let's remember the date, right? Fifteen years ago, folks, I'm not kidding, in 2003, here in the United States, that was during George W. Bush's first term. Right? Manny Pacquiao knocked out Marco Antonio Barrera 15 years ago. In 2006, Pacquiao KOs Eric Morales avenging an earlier loss to Morales in a fight that really is a masterpiece by Morales. Right? Understand in 2008 and 2011, while I personally disagreed with these decisions, Pacquiao gets decisions over Juan Manuel Marquez. In 2008, 10 years ago, he then fights for the lightweight title against David Diaz, destroys him by knockout. Pacquiao then figuratively declares war on the higher weights. He then starts literally mowing down, right, like a lawnmower over grass, or like a bowling ball, knocking down pins. He then starts mowing down a group of fighters that are very highly thought of. Many of them would end up in the Hall of Fame. What I'm going to do is name the names. Understand as I name them, Pacquiao mowed all of these guys down. Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, Miguel Cotto, Joshua Clotty, Antonio Margarito, Sugar Shane Mosley. He beats Mosley in 2011. Right? Remember that. 2011. Seven years ago. Of the guys I've named, De La Hoya retired. He's now big big time as a promoter. Ricky Hatton retired. He's also behind the scenes. Miguel Cotto retired. Joshua Clotty, still lingering a bit, has his moments, did go to Australia and beat Anthony Mundine. Antonio Margarito suffered an eye injury in that Pacquiao fight. Hasn't really been the same since. Does come back and fight every now and then. Sugar Shane Mosley retired. Let's fast forward seven years. We're here in 2018. There is a new generation of fighters sitting on the throne or close to the throne. Very highly thought of. The argument I'm making here is that Manny Pacquiao, if he decides to give us boxing's version of Montezuma's revenge, might be able to line up these guys like he did a generation ago and mow down many of them. Let's name them. Now understand, 
Pacquiao's a freak athlete. Some of these guys are big punchers. But I would argue that none of these guys, none of them, have the hand speed that Manny Pacquiao has right now at 39 years of age. Right? I would argue, too, that Manny Pacquiao today still has the timing, still has the power, still has the suddenness. I would even argue that with regard to most of these guys, Manny Pacquiao has the superior footwork, the superior foot speed. Let's go through them. Unbeaten IBF champion Errol Spence. Unbeaten WBA super champion Keith Thurman. Now let me say this. If Pacquiao fights Thurman now, Pacquiao should probably be favored in that fight because Thurman's having a very hard time coming back from a major injury. Hasn't fought for over a year. Right? So maybe calling out Keith Thurman here is a little unfair. You have also unbeaten WBO welterweight champion and perhaps the best in the sport pound for pound, Terrence Crawford. Now let me say this. Crawford is a master technician. Masterful. Crawford probably knows all about that Floyd Mayweather take. And Crawford's probably one of the few people who fully appreciates Mayweather's mastery of Pacquiao. Crawford probably is fully prepared to bend his head and to have a glove up to catch Pacquiao's straight left hand. Right? Crawford would be a very tough fight, no question about it. But understand, we're talking about the pound-for-pound -pound best against a guy who's about to turn 40 years of age. A guy who mowed down a generation of fighters before Crawford. The idea that Pacquiao would be competitive against Crawford by itself is a victory for Pacquiao. I personally would be taking Pacquiao in the fight because I think Pacquiao is too fast for Terrence Crawford. Understand, too, with Pacquiao as Matisse, who gets dropped three times, who spits out his mouthpiece the third time he's dropped, knows well. Pacquiao hits hard. Folks, there's not a lot of margin for error. I understand Pacquiao doesn't have a lot of stoppages over the last ten years. Okay, fair enough. Many of you aren't satisfied with the fact that he knocked Chris Algieri down, what, five or six times? Many people aren't satisfied with the idea that Shane Mosley hits the canvas and post-fight interview says, you know, that might be the hardest I've ever been hit, but was able to get up and last the rest of the fight. Understand, signs of Pacquiao's power pop up every now and then. I'm just telling you, he still has it. In fact, there's an old adage in boxing. Power is the last to go. Well, let's go further, right? My argument here is I believe Pacquiao is competitive, and Pacquiao's a WBA welterweight champ. Understand, if he fights these guys, he's just trying to be great, trying to unify the title, right? My point to you is, against unbeaten Errol Spence, unbeaten Keith Thurman, and unbeaten Terrence Crawford, I believe Pacquiao would hold his own against each of the fighters, right? Of a generation after a generation, where Pacquiao beat several guys who are now in the Hall of Fame. Well, let's dare to dream here. And YouTube Nation, I'm going to call on you to tell me where I'm wrong in the comment section to this video. I think Pacquiao, who is more sudden and has more volume, would have a real shot against unbeaten 154-pound WBC champion Jamal Charlo. Right? Charlo these days has reduced his volume. 
He's now loading up on punches. I'm just telling you, as Oscar De La Hoya knows, as Ricky Hatton knows, as Miguel Cotto knows, as Antonio Margarito knows, that strategy doesn't work against a guy who's as fast and who hits as hard as Manny Pacquiao. Jamel Charlo has hand speed. I'm just saying it's not Pacquiao level hand speed. Let me go further. You have an unbeaten IBF and WBA champion, Jared Hurd. Now this would be an interesting fight because Hurd is front foot heavy. He doesn't like to back up. He's physical. An argument can be made that a front foot heavy physical Jeff Horn was able to muscle and mess up Manny Pacquiao, right? Make the fight close enough where the judges gave the fight to Jeff Horn, right? Jared Hurd, the idea would be that many of these guys aren't physical. They don't come in and grab you and rough you up. Jared Hurd would. But here's the catch. Jared Hurd is not defensively blessed. He's not. Right? I'm not sure how Jared Hurd would survive some of Pacquiao's shots. Understand, Jeff, Hur uh, Jeff Horn got warned by the referee. Right? Jeff Horn took some shots. Pacquiao is so sudden. He's so sudden. I'm not sure if a guy who's not defensively blessed, who's too big to move out of the way, who's front foot heavy so that you know where he's going to be, is going to be able to beat Manny. Let me go one step further. WBO champion Jaime Munguia. You need to know this name. Big puncher. Huge puncher. But again, doesn't have the hand speed doesn't have the hand speed of 39-year-old Manny Pacquiao. I believe this really is one of the biggest opportunities in the entire sport of boxing. Given that you have this farce going on at heavyweight where two unbeaten heavyweight champions won't fight each other. By the way, I don't think that fight ever happens. I don't, because I'm expecting Alexander Povetkin to look good against Anthony Joshua. Right? If he doesn't take the title, I believe he's going to test Joshua enough where Joshua is going to go back into a shell and is going to try to find a way to avoid Deontay Wilder. I also think Wilder is vulnerable in every fight he has. Right? Because the last couple of fights I've seen of Wilder's, the Luis Ortiz fight, where Ortiz, in my opinion, is ahead on my scorecard, Right, uh, several rounds into the fight. The Gerald Washington fight, where here again, on my scorecard, Gerald Washington's well ahead of him. Right, Wilder doesn't give himself a lot of margin for error. Right, in other words, opponents, Arthur Spielka, start to get bold against Wilder. They're there for several rounds. Right, we forget Eric Molina is there for several rounds and hurts Wilder in that fight. Right? So given that the heavyweights aren't giving us the best fights, right? Anthony Joshua, rather than try to go for Wilder's title in a battle of unbeatens, would rather defend whatever belt he has where Povetkin is a mandatory, right? In his backyard, of course. Rather than wait for the heavyweights to figure out that we want to see the best against the best, what I'm going to do in this video is to call on an original gangster, an OG, a guy from an earlier generation, a guy who's 39, a guy who's a short ballot first, a first ballot Hall of Famer already, right? You say Manny Pacquiao, the Hall's going to say obviously, right? First ballot, he'll get in. I'm going to call on Manny Pacquiao here, really, to save boxing. Right, to step up here and to say, look, I ruled the roost before. 
I'm going to take on all these unbeaten fighters. And I'm going to try to leave this sport in shock. Let me point out, too, the names I've named, and they're great names, aren't the only names Manny could fight in historical matchups. Right? Mikey Garcia is a sure fire Hall of Famer in my book. Right? He's still unbeaten. I'm expecting him to beat Robert Easter. Right? Manny could pivot and say, hey, I'm going to take on Mikey. Because both of them, quite frankly, have won titles in at least three different weight classes. Think about it. With Manny, it's more than double that number. So, if it's possible for a 39-year-old to hold most of the cards in the sport of boxing, let me just argue here in this video that that person holding the cards right now is Manny Pacquiao. I was watching a fight, the New Orleans fighter, uh, Pobre, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name, he was calling out Manny Pacquiao. He's unbeaten. Right? Everyone wants to fight Manny Pacquiao. Until they do. And then they're in the ring and they understand there's a difference between their hand speed and Manny Pacquiao's hand speed. There's a difference between their punching power and Manny Pacquiao's punching power. We got a gift. Timothy Bradley just happened to be doing the fight. Bradley talked about his third match against Pacquiao. He talks about how he throws a double jab. He was having a good round. He threw a double jab, and as he's throwing the second jab of the double jab, he understood he was in trouble. Right? Manny Pacquiao then delivered the boom on him. The rest of the fight just wasn't the same. Right? With Pacquiao, you don't have a margin of error. I think it's a mistake to look at what Floyd Mayweather did and then to think that other guys can duplicate it. Let's be real here too. Right? Longtime viewers know I picked Mayweather over Pacquiao, but even I wonder what would have happened had the two guys fought five years earlier. Right? The biggest mistake Manny Pacquiao made was in not having that fight go forward. Let's remember, Mayweather was magnanimous. Mayweather said, look, let's split the purse 50-50. This was even though Mayweather was the bigger pay-per-view draw at the time. Then they got into an argument over drug testing, and that fight fell apart. By the time they fought years later, Pacquiao had already lost, right, some bouts. Had they fought closer to Pacquiao's domination, that's the word, of Oscar De La Hoya, who knows what would have happened. In any event, I'm not sure if Errol Spence, Keith Thurman, or even Terrence Crawford can duplicate what Floyd Mayweather did. Hell, I'm not sure if one floor up at 154, Jamel Charlo, Jared Hurd, or Jaime Mungia could duplicate what Floyd Mayweather did. Manny, line these guys up. Let's see which one of these guys is still standing. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. And let me say this too. And I know I've offended a lot of Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder fans. Before you leave your comments, just look at the Muhammad Ali in his prime blinding speed YouTube video in my favorites folder. Right? That's what footwork looks like. That's what spacing looks like. Defense so good you don't even have to put your hands up. That's what combination punching looks like. Right? That's what movement looks like. If you've been watching Joshua and Wilder, you might not know. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.